What's up my friends, welcome back. What I have here is a rotary encoded voice menu. As you can see I've got an LCD here for a fake coffee machine. I say fake because this will be just an example for you to learn how to use all these components. So let me just show you a small example of what this project can do. I can scroll down and I can scroll up. And when I select, select an audio file will be played. Now I can select my coffee. I can also change the sugar level. I can also turn off the backlight. backlight turned off. So today we will look at a very simple but interesting project. We will use this small rotor encoder to scroll through the menu, this LCD to print our text with an I2C communication, this DF player module to play our MP3 sounds and an audio amplifier with a speaker. That's all we need for this project. So first, I will show you how to use this rotor encoder, how a rotor encoder works and how to use it to scroll up and down in the menu, and also how to select. Next, we will see how this LCD works with I2C communication, so we won't need a lot of wires. And I will also show you how to make these special characters as an arrow, a musical note and so on, because these special characters are a little bit more difficult to create. Finally, I will show you how this DF player module works and how to use it to play mp3 files for the menu and also how to amplify the sound using this cheap audio amplifier with a small speaker. So let's get started! This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the GLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back. First of all, this is just an example. There is no real coffee machine. Check the final code and change it whatever you want to suit your needs for your own menu. You have the code, the part list and the audio files below as always. So, we'll do this project step by step. If you want, you could jump directly at the final project. But first, I want to show you how each element works. Let's start with the rotary encoder. This is the most basic rotary encoder that you will find there. It looks like a potentiometer, but it is not. It can detect rotation steps, direction of rotation and also has a push button inside. So it's the perfect component for a menu to scroll up and down and also to select using the push button. So here is how this works. Inside, we have a perimeter of copper connection like this one here. The more connectors we have, the better is the precision of the encoder. We also have two connectors that will be two of the encoder pins outputs and we name those clock and data. All of the internal connectors are connected to ground. And the clock and data outputs will have a 10k pull-up resistor like this. So right now the pins are not touching the internal copper connectors, so the voltage at the output is 5 volts, since we have the pull-up connected to that voltage. But when we start rotating the encoder to the right, the clock output will touch one of the connectors, and the output at the clock pin will be now ground, but the data pin is still 5 volts. We keep rotating till the data pin will also be ground. So all we have to do in order to know the rotation direction is to know which pin is switched to ground first. If it's clock then data, we are rotating to the right. And if it's data then clock, we are rotating to the left. And each time one of the pins changes its value from ground to 5 volts or from 5 volts to ground, we count one step. But in the code we will also save the initial position of the pins and then just detect any change in that position. So that easy we can count steps and also detect the rotation direction. So now when we are rotating to the right we increase the steps. And when rotating to the left we decrease the step values as we can see here in this example. 
One important thing about encoders is that the connector has to be bigger than the pins and the space between the connectors as well. So in a certain moment both pins could fit on the metal connector. Because if not we couldn't be able to detect direction, only count steps. So now that we know how this works, let's make the connections to the Arduino and run the first example code of this tutorial. By the way you have all the codes and example and all the schematics below. So make sure you check the description of this video. So I'll connect the clock pin to digital pin 8 and the data to digital pin 9. Remember to add those pull up resistor of 10k between each pin and 5 volts and connect ground to the middle pin of the encoder. We won't connect the push button for this example, only the two pins. Now open this next code and upload it to the Arduino. First we define the pins that we are using, which are pins 8 and 9 from the Arduino. We start the serial communication because I want to print the steps on the serial monitor. So the code is more than easy. We read the state of the clock pin. If the detected state is not the same as the last state, we had a change. But if the state is the same, well, we don't do nothing. So now we check the state of the data pin. If it's different than the clock pin, then we are rotating to the right. And if it's the same, we are rotating to the left, increasing or decreasing the counter value. Finally, we print the values on the serial monitor. By the way guys, the final code is made with pin interruptions instead of digital read in the void loop, in order to make sure that we won't lose any step. But for this example using digital read in the void loop it's ok. So upload the code and open the serial monitor. As you can see I start rotating the encoder and I increase or decrease the counter value. Easy right? Now let's put the encoder aside and let's talk a bit about the LCD screen. Usually you could control this one by connecting all of the data pins here. But to keep it simple and only use two pins, this LCD has an I2C module on the back. So connect the data and clock pins to analog pins A4 and A5 as in this schematic and let's look over the code. Remember to also connect the ground pin and 5 volts. So first download and install the I2C liquid crystal library below and install it to the Arduino IDE. Without this library the code won't work. Inside the code we first import the library. We define the slave address for this screen, which is usually 0x3f or 0x27 in hexadecimal. So if your screen doesn't work with the first address, try both of these slave addresses. Inside the setup loop, we use the init and backlight function to start the LCD and also to power the backlight. Now let's print something. We clear the LCD, set the cursor to the first row and second column position and we write electro noobs. Now we set the cursor to the second row and write hello world. Add a small delay, upload the code and let's see the results. There you go, easy right? Now let's create those special characters. So I want to draw the musical note and the arrow symbols. If we look close enough to the LCD screen, we can see that each character is made up of a square of 7 by 5 small dots. So this will be our 7 by 5 square. So let's say that we want to draw the arrow. The first row has nothing, so we have a binary 0. The second row has one dot in the third position, so we have a 100, which in hexadecimal it's a 4. The third row has a 110 which is a 6 and the fourth has a full line of 1s which is 1f in hexadecimal. Then everything is repeating. So to draw this symbol we have to send to the screen a 0, 4, 6, 1f, 6, 4 and another 0. So in the code I create a new byte called arrow and the vector will be these numbers. Then in the setup loop I create the symbol using the create char function and give to it the 0 position. So now in the loop I use the lcd.write function to send the zero character that I've just created. Add the delay, upload the code and there you go, I've got the arrow symbol printed on the screen. Do the same for any symbol that you want.
You could even create two symbols that when put together will create a unique symbol. That's it, let's put the LCD aside and now look on how the DF player module works. This is the module that we will use and these are the connections that we will need. The speaker output, the serial communication and the power supply. We need to add a 1K resistor between the RX and TX serial communication pins of the Arduino and the module, because if not, we will have a hiss noise when playing the sound. I don't know why is that, but the 1K ohm resistor fixed the problem. So make sure you add those two resistors. We also need a micro SD card to store the MP3 files. On this SD card, we have to put the files as this. On the SD card, create a new folder and name it MP3. And we start with the file 0000, then the file 0001, 0002 and so on. You can put any file that you want. You can play a song, you could record your voice or do what I've did. I've created my files using a web page that will pass any text that you write to a female robotic voice. You've pressed button 1. Okay. Make this connection between the module and the Arduino. At the output I've added a simple audio amplifier. Links for all the parts are below. Add a small speaker, connect 3 push buttons and upload the next code. First we need to install the DF player library. Download it from a link below and install it to your Arduino IDE. In the setup loop, we define the pins for the push buttons and prepare the audio module. To play any sound, we have to use the play mp3 folder track function and select the file number, where track 1 represents the file 0000 on the SD card and so on. Each time I press a button, a different sound will play. Upload this example code and let's see the results. As you can see, for each button I've got a different voice. So there you go, now we know how everything works for this project. In the final code I merge everything together. Use this final schematic that you could download from a link below. Have it in front of you and make all the connections. In the code, depending on the position encoded with the rotary encoder, we navigate through the first menu. When pushing the button, we select the menu and enter the second menu. My example is just two menu deep, but you could go even deeper with three or four menus. Let's look at the short example of what this project could do. Select sugar level. Sugar level set to 50%. Switch backlight. Backlight turned off. Switch backlight. So there you go. Backlight Make sure you read off. all the comments in the code in order to understand each part. Anyway, Switch the code is quite easy. You have selected latte. So there you go, my friends. I've got my scrolling voice menu and also with special characters. I can select my type of coffee and then the sugar level. I can also activate or disactivate the LCD light or set the voice volume. You can make your own menu with different text and different actions. Check all the extra information below. If you would like to help my project like this one, I have a Patreon campaign. The link is down below. I would really really appreciate that guys. Also check all the links in the description that will help you make your project. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.